Hi, this is foreclosure and real estate defense attorney Roy Oppenheim. I'd like to talk today a little bit about 1099s. 1099s seem to be the bane of the folks that are underwater today trying to figure out if they're going to end up realizing some sort of phantom income if they do a short sale or a foreclosure. What, what happens with a 1099 is that if in fact you do a short sale, previously if it was your primary residence you would not be hit with loan forgiveness income. It's kind of a phantom income for money you borrow that you're not going to pay back. And since you borrowed it and didn't pay it back, it's somewhat considered as income by the Internal Revenue Service. Well, for the past seven or eight years, as President Bush was leaving office, he passed an exemption for this loan forgiveness in income if it was your primary residence. In addition, President Obama last year with Congress extended that exemption for one year. Well, this year on January 1st, the exemption ended and people were hoping that it would continue and continue to help the short sale industry and the real and realtors and everyone associated with with short sales but in fact it was not continuing so if you do a short sale today the likelihood is that if in fact there is money that you do not pay the bank back and they're willing to discharge you from that obligation they're going to issue you a 1099 whether it's your primary residence or whether it's it's, a, it's an investment vehicle now if you get hit with a 1099 all is not lost if, in fact, you can demonstrate that you are insolvent, now, I'm not a CPA, I'm not an accountant, so I suggest you find a good CPA or an accountant, they will help you determine if you're insolvent. If you're insolvent, the IRS will waive the loan forgiveness income in most circumstances, and you will not have to pay that money back. Things get more complicated, though, in a foreclosure. If you go through a foreclosure, and there is, in fact, a waiver of deficiency, with that waiver of deficiency, just like a short sale, you will likely be issued a 1099. Just like with a short sale, if you do get the 1099, and if you're insolvent, you can probably get out from paying the uh, 1099 from that foreclosure. Now, what gets more interesting is if you do a foreclosure and you decide not to have the deficiency waived, or the bank chooses not to waive the deficiency, they can't issue a 1099 to you because they haven't pursued the deficiency. And because they only have one year to actually pursue the deficiency under the new law in the state of Florida, if they never pursue that deficiency at all, there's a theoretical construct that that 1099 will never be issued. Or, at some point, the bank can realize that they can't go after the money and can just decide to issue you the 1099 whenever you want. Should that happen, you simply can, again, demonstrate that you're insolvent. The alternative to all of this is that if you do file bankruptcy, within a bankruptcy, uh, if, the, if there is, in fact, a deficiency, the 1099 would get wiped out uh, in the bankruptcy, and, and just like the insolvency, on a non-bankruptcy context, you would not be responsible for the income to the IRS if, you're, if you go through a bankruptcy. I know it's complex, it's kind of tricky, but at the end of the day, we have your back, we have figured this out, give us a call, Roy Alpenheim from the trenches.